The college football experience, UNLV Running Rebels 2023 season preview episode on the Sports Gambling Podcast Network is brought to you by our very own Patreon. Yes, score exclusive perks, content, and contests, including our NFL win totals contest with a thousand dollar first place prize. Join today, sports gambling podcast.com slash Patreon. We're also brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app to get last minute tickets at the lowest price guaranteed. Use the promo code SGPN for $20 off. I'm sorry. No, no, no. Use the promo code CFBX. Why do I always forget this? CFBX for the college football experience uh, to get $20 off. We're also brought to you by DraftKings Sportsbook. Download the app now and use the promo code DGEN. That's D E G E N. Uh, DGEN. New customers can score $200 in bonus bets instantly. When they bet just five dollars on any college football bet, only on DraftKings Sportsbook with the promo code DJ. That's D E G E N. Hey, this is Derek Stevens. I'm the owner of Circa Las Vegas. You're listening to FGPN. Let it ride. Yes, yes, yes. Woo! Welcome. Welcome to the college football experience. You and L V Running Rebels 2023 season preview. Can can they get back to the days of Randall Cunningham and Keen and McCardo and Icky Woods? It was a long time ago. <laughs> yes. Man, Jason Thomas year in the late nineties with John and Hollywood Robinson. Mm. Uh, oh, it's going to be fun. And they just went out and they hired Barry Odom. We're going to talk all about it. But perhaps you're wondering just who the hell you're listening to. My name is Colby Swinging Database Dan, a.k.a. Pick Dundee. That's not a pick. This is a pick. He was raised in the land down under where a man thinks on his feet, speaks with his fists, and lives by his wits. When Dundee happened, he was a superstar. I'm probably drinking too much and celebrating too much and not sleeping. I would have killed a normal man, but nah, nah, that's gone. The medical advice I got from that was, was like being hit by lightning. Pretend it never happened and get on with your life. And you're nothing but a chameleon, lemon-headed, coward, terrorist pussy. And I'm after you, buddy. You're going to pay for it. Good night. Yes, we are talking running rebels. You know, my favorite basketball team probably of all time. 1990, running Rebels, Anderson Hunt, Stacey Augman, Larry Johnson, Greg Anthony. Oh, that's the college basketball experience. You should be subscribed over there because when the season tips, I'm rocking every single night of the season. But I am excited to talk UNLV football. Maybe they finally got the right man for the job, and we are going to be joined later with Michael Barker, a.k.a. College Football Campus Tour, to talk a little bit about uh, the UNLV uh, home game situation. But uh, I am joined right now by my co-host, and this guy is the host of the Bottom Line Bombs podcast, which you need to be subscribed to. Now we got a problem. Now we got a problem. <laughs> they call him the man in the box. I give you what? C.J. Sullivan. How you doing, brother? Great. Good memories there at the 90 Rebels. You and how did Anderson Hunt not get a job in the NBA? What I mean, what was going on out there? Yeah. Yeah. I well, love I, and I, I love the and I love the program that was taken down with a with a photo of a hot tub. There was no more scumbag of a photo than those playing that Vegas bookie in a hot tub. Uh, Vegas. Absolutely that was great. fantastic. All right. <laughs> I love it. And I love Randall Cunningham winning the punt pass and kick competition in Vegas. Steven Jackson, even though he went to Oregon State. From the city of Las Vegas, hometown Las Vegas. His personality is Las Vegas. Well, it's... let's let's talk about that because Snoop does that high school there. Uh-huh. You know, uh, this city, it reminds me. So, people that don't know their college football history, like Miami, was terrible for a right. long time until Howard Schnellenberger 
uh, was able to really drove drove his hat and cigar down into the ghetto and <laughs> well, that he said city, he the only that first city one kind of emerged at the same yeah. time. If you watch Cocaine Cowboys or something, which is a documentary that's great, um, uh, Las Vegas is a it, the population is growing every day. All these people from California, you know, Arizona, Las Vegas, uh, and Idaho are get, all of a sudden getting like a ton of Californians move there, which means the California talent that we once had here in California is not as good because they are going yeah. tons, boatloads of people. And then the only people coming in are these, these, these filthy actors and comedians. You know? <laughs> I know, right? Us uh, soulless people <laughs> coming in and uh, we're pushing out all our good, uh, good people. Yeah. Because of the tax situation. <laughs> but honestly, like uh, the, the, the Vegas area, produces a lot more talent than it did 10, 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. And I think it's a sleeping giant. It's the only show in town as far as college football, right? I think it's a sleeping giant. Now there's some things I would do differently, I think, uh, but, but maybe, maybe Barry Odom's the right guy for the job. So they fire Marcus Arroyo, right? Former San Jose state quarterback. A little early and, on that a little quick trigger on him. I thought yeah, a little, little, little quick trigger, but you know what I think that is? They have a different athletic director, and sometimes mm. they want their they want guy. guy. Yeah, get yeah, their yeah. guy. They need their guy. So, look, Barry Odom. You can make an, an argument that Barry Odom shouldn't have been fired at Missouri because he was doing exactly what Eli Drinkwitz has been doing. <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> right? No, absolutely. Seven games. Um, but it's a weird. I mean, if if you think you got the right guy, like I do, think Barry Odom is a good football coach, right? Mm -hmm. But. It's not like he had any ties to. I mean, he played at Missouri. He had, he hasn't had any ties to 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 Las Vegas. So I thought that was a little bit interesting. I also, you know, when you get kind of gifted, Gary Pinkle's uh, Gary Pinkle was doing an unbelievable job at Missouri. Right. I I think it was going to be hard for anybody to replace him. But my point is this: he's only had SEC talent his whole coaching career, mm -hmm. the exception of two years at Memphis. Uh, from 2012 to 14 has been with sec players. He was most recently the defense coordinator of Arkansas. It's a little different in the mountain West. And I feel like we learn how good of a coach you are. You know, like I, I know that sounds crazy because you would think, well, the sec has the most money. They also get the best players. And a lot of times they break the rules to get the best players. You have to be very creative. Uh, you know, I feel like at the, at the group of five level more than you do at the, at the elite levels of college football, uh, it will be interesting to watch. What'd you make of that hire? I uh, I think it's the modern football. They're thinking of the transfer portal. You know, I think either the when, I, when you get like an SEC coach, you're thinking hopefully they'll bring some of that talent with them, which he did with his. You know, he brought his one guy, Jackson Woodward. But like other than that, you know, yeah, I think I think that's what you have to. It's j just as much as recruiting. It's now who you can bring uh, transfer wise and recruit kids that are out, already out there. You know, I mean, he went twenty five and twenty five as a head coach at Missouri. That's not very good, but at the same, I mean, right. It's not bad either. I'm not saying he should have been fired, but I'm saying like, it's an interesting hire to me that right when he came in, he brings Bobby Petrino who lasted two weeks in Vegas. Yeah. It's just kind of what I expected of Bobby Petrino. In Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> but, Even that uh, might've been a little too long, yeah. you know, <laughs> one week's like a year there. <laughs> yeah. So, so I mean, fascinated by this hire. Now, Arroyo had been recruiting well, so maybe, you could argue Barry Odom walks into one of the more talented rosters, but you got to win the games. And I think that's got to win the games. Always tricky. I can, I can remember certain coaches at Fresno state or certain coaches at San Diego state, Chuck long being one of them that couldn't get any wins. You're like, how the fuck you got all this talent? How the hell are you not winning the games? <laughs> so uh, we're going to talk all about it, folks. All right. We're going to dive into the offense, the defense, the special teams, how UNLV fared in the transfer portal. We're going to grade that. Mm. That's just a big factor in college football in 2023. Then we're going to go game by game on the schedule. Hopefully you're watching on YouTube, youtube.com slash the college experience. That's the hub for all of our college uh, podcast. Uh, once again, FCS college football experience, the college football experience, the college basketball experience, the college baseball experience and the big 12 experience. It's the big 12. All right. Uh, Get on over there, subscribe to all those, and also remember, subscribe to the Bottom Line Bob's Podcast. All right, we're going to get to all that, but I want to tell you folks out there that the UNLV Rudder Rebels 2023 season previews brought to you by Game Time. Yes, buying tickets to your favorite events shouldn't be that stressful. You go to Vegas to see UNLV? <laughs> no, no. It, I mean, you, you, go, you go to Vegas to see Blue Man Group or something, right? 
And may, maybe you got to stress that out. Or, or the Beatles. Don't the, they have that Beatles. Hey, uh, Circuit of Soleil. Yeah, I, I saw that thing. And let me tell you, that was a steep little ticket. A steep little <laughs> ticket. <laughs> um, so uh, it was a game time. You got $20 yeah. off with that code SGPN. Boom. That's that's why we got the man in the box here. Because this game time is a fast and easy way to buy tickets for sport. Anything. Sports, music, comedy, theater. Uh, you got it. it. It's just the smartest way to do it. In my opinion, forget planning months in advance. Game times has, has deals on tickets right up to the last second of the event. So the, and they, and, and get this, they have the game time guarantee, which is mm. phenomenal. If I may say so, because you always get the, bre- the best price. If you find tickets in the same section and row for less game time, will credit you 110% of the difference. Oh. Snag the tickets without the stress with the game time app. Download the, the game time app, create an account, use the promo code CFBX for $20 off your first purchase. Ter- uh, terms apply. Once again, create that account, CFBX for $20 off. Download the game time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest price, guaranteed. We're also brought to you by Underdog Fantasy. Look, we're at the end of August, folks. You know what that means. Time is running out to get your fantasy football team on Underdog Fantasy. I just did my college football, fantasy football draft. I got my NFL fantasy football draft this Sunday. I can't wait to, to throw out my roster and beat the tar out of the opposing teams. All right. But look, you got to try out the best ball fantasy style on underdog fantasy. Cause it's fantastic. All you have to do is one live snake draft, no waivers, no trades. You said it, you can forget about it and boom, underdog's going to do the rest and get this. It's the largest fantasy football contest of all time. That is Underdog's Best Ball Mania Tournament. $15 million in total prizes up for grabs, including a an absurd $3 million going to the winner. Do you have what it takes to win it all, folks? Get on over there. Visit underdogfantasy.com uh, or find them in the App Store to sign up with the promo code SGPN. You get your first deposit doubled up to $100. That's Underdog Fantasy, promo code SGPN. Concerned with your play call, 1-800-GAMBLER. All right, we are back on the college football experience. U N L V running rebels and I don't know. Oh no, man, they how is this? Power the lights, outage. the lights went out as soon as you're talking about U N L V. Reminds me of the first game U N L V had a point spread. Remember when they played Wisconsin? It was the first time Vegas oh, yeah. allowed a Vegas oh, allowed yeah. a point spread, and Wisconsin was about to cover and win, and then they all of a sudden the lights went out. And then all tickets were void. And then there was like three separate stories of how they went out, put a power out. It was like, oh, a truck hit a pole. They said it was a grid system. Like they didn't get their story straight. So it was obviously corrupt. And then we're bad. We're back. There I mean, that go. was amazing. I don't know if you planned that or not, but that was incredible. <laughs> Dude, I, 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 I like, I was ready to go into the darkness on UNLV football. Because that's really, <laughs> that's really yeah. what UNLV football has been since Randall Cut, since Icky right. Woods. Since Icky Woods' knee got torn up at at uh, you know mm-hmm. year two or three of his career, yep, he was he was about they were about to capitalize off of that and be able to recruit and be like, you want to be the next Icky Woods? Mm. No, no, no. They've been asked pretty much ever since. No, but that's so they, what it was. The power went out in the first game that UNLV had a point spread for because everyone bet on UNLV and Wisconsin was going to cover. So then all tickets were void. So they they called the game halfway through the fourth quarter. That's amazing. That's amazing. One of my favorite UNLV football memories, even though I know they were terrible, they were playing Baylor. I think ba- I think it was in Vegas. No, it was either. I don't know because Baylor's old stadium kind of looked like Sam Boyd. Um, they're up. Baylor's got the game won. Got the game won. They don't need the ball. They're at the. They are at the UNLV four yard line. But there's no. There's like thirty seconds on the clock. The game is over. UNLV has no timeouts. Right. They go to run the ball. The guy tries to put the ball into the end zone and they knock the ball out and the safety for UNLV picks it up and runs 99 yards. I actually, I think he probably like 103 yards for an upset win against Baylor. Fucking one of the best, one of the best plays for karma on being an asshole. Amazing. Or extra points. Um, Maybe you folks out there remember that fine, fine game. If not, that's what the beauty of YouTube. Let's talk about this transfer portal. <laughs> though. Um, departing. Rip thing. Off. Because because Marcus Arroyo leaves, you know, you're going to get anytime you get coaching changes, you're going to get you're going to get some big losses. Right. Um, wide receiver Jeff, Jeffrey Weimer 
in the portal. Running back Samuel Green in the portal. This is all according to 24-7 Sports, by the way. Tight end, uh, uh, Brian Lighon in the portal. Uh, running back J- Javon Wilson portal. Uh, uh, running back Spencer Briggs portal. Tight end Sean Grayson portal. Now, this is where it gets interesting. Preston Nichols on the offensive line heads out to the Purdue Boilermakers. That's a loss that can hurt. Harrison Bailey, former five-star quarterback, heads out to Jeff Brom in the Louisville Cardinals. Uh, running back Gary Quarles, portal. I thought, I, I thought he landed somewhere, though. I thought I read he landed somewhere. Um, Cornerback, uh, Kanahe Mede, Mediola Jensen, portal. Uh, safety, Philip Hall heads to North Texas, the mean green. Offensive lineman, Laif Fa- Fontananu. This guy's a stud. He heads out to Arizona State. He's going to start for them. Uh, running back, Aiden Robbins. This guy was a stud last year. He transfers to BYU. He's going to start for them. Mm. Uh, Washington State wide or they lose their wide receiver Kyle Williams to Washington State. I have been rostering Kyle Williams for the past couple of years in DFS on our DFS shows, folks. That's a substantial loss. Cornerback Noel Williams. This is a four-star transfer to the Cal Golden Bears and Justin Wilcox. Um, offensive tackle Noah McKinley also heads out to Oklahoma State. Cornerback Cameron Blanton goes the JUCO route, and linebacker Tanner Salisbury. I don't know if there's any relation to Sean, but uh, <laughs> he's in the portal. Man, those are some big hits, right? Yeah, some big names, some big starters, and like you said, but that's that's to be expected when you have a coaching change. True, true. Uh, and no, you know what it is? Is Gary Quarles? Gary Quarles actually came in. The, the, the site's messed up. He came in from Alabama A and M. Uh, incoming. Besides that, linebacker Bam Amina from Colorado State in conference. Wow. Uh, hmm. Safety Jackson Turner from the Arizona Wildcats. And remember, folks, that Barry Odom was most recently the defensive coordinator of the Arkansas Razorbacks. Yes. So what does he do? He gets Jalen St. John offensive tackle for the Razorbacks. And this is a, a get that I really like because Sam Pork Pittman, the head coach of Arkansas, great offensive line coach, great mm-hmm. offensive line coach. So that means they got guys. Also, linebacker Jackson Woodard from the Arkansas Razorbacks coming into UNLV. Cornerback Jalen Frazier from NC State. NC State's got one of the deepest secondaries in America. Comes in to UNLV. And then I really like this kid here, running back Vincent Davis from Pitt. I think he's going to be a little bell cow uh, in Vegas here. Offensive lineman Jack Haas from the Buffalo Bulls. And Bobby Petrino, he was only in town for two weeks, but he convinced his kicker, Jose Pizano from Missouri State, to come into Vegas. And then four-star transfer get from the LSU Tigers, Xavier uh, uh, is that Javier Javier Carter Javier Carter from the LSU Tigers four-star transfer they did kind of bounce back a little bit but I still think in my opinion they still lost it slightly well I think yeah like you said it's very close they lost talent wise as far as starters on starters goes but they're bringing in guys they need because they're changing systems and stuff like that too so they kind of fit needs with their guys Jackson Woodward the linebacker from Arkansas he brought over from Arkansas he's going to be key in uh Pretty much just teaching everyone how Odom runs his defense, you know, and how he like he yeah. it's a very complicated system that he knows and he knows the language and all that. So he's gonna he's gonna help out the two tutorial of that. Um, <laughs> other than that, I like that pit running back as well. But uh, they're gonna you know we'll get we'll we'll, we'll get into the offense, but they're gonna need more than him for running back wise. Um. Well, yeah, I mean. Because you said they, were, you know, he's going to be a bell cow. He's going to have to be because they have nobody else. It seems like, and it's weird for an offense that they're changing. We'll get into that as well, which needs multiple running backs. Yeah. So remember, they had they had a uh, they had Bobby Petrino for like two two weeks. The new mm-hmm. offense coordinator is uh, Brennan Marion. Yes. Who, uh, you know, this is a guy that was an offensive coordinator at Howard in 2017 with the Bison, where he put up 45 points in an upset of UNLV, which is one of the biggest upsets in college football history as far as a spread. Yeah. And Howard Bison beat UNLV. This is the go go offense, obviously. You know, Washington. what a great system. It's called yeah. the go go offense. The <laughs> go 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 just. Uh, you beat some and then he gets a job from it. That's amazing. It's basically. It's basically go go for no huddle and it's verticals and a lot of multiple backs, but it's just go go and row row. So it's going to be, you know, on the ball and, uh, you know, vertical offense, which their quarterback can facilitate if he's healthy. 
Yeah, I mean, last year, scoring offense, 75th, rush offense, 86th, uh, pass offense, 89th, total offense at 97th. But, you know, they did Doug, – Doug Brumfield is a pretty yeah. solid quarterback. They also have Cameron Friel, who started some games, and they even have Jaden uh, uh, Vea. Um, so they have a pretty deep quarterback room. But Yeah, Brum, Brumfield was great. He's dual threat. He was four and well start. Yeah, then he got hurt, of course, but he's been hurt the last couple of years. That's kind of what he does. So it's going to it's going to be interesting if he does have something left in him to be healthy. But when he's healthy, he's good. No, I like him. I like him. And yeah. I, after interviewing him at Mountain West Media Day, I like him. Yes. He was a great interview because he tells me uh, he tells me, you know, I don't I asked the question regarding the EA sports games. It, it's uh-huh. been a topical situation where, like, people are saying, hey, the players are only getting, you know, five hundred dollars, you know, to get in the video game. Right. Because there's like, you know, obviously almost. What if you add an FCS 260 teams um, with with 80 man rosters? That's a. Mm-hmm. But he was like, I don't even. You can keep the five hundred dollars. He's like, I want to be in the game. All right. Yes. Yeah. Well, he's, so, he's an yeah. LA guy. He knows. Yeah. He knows where the real money's at. Yeah. It's, it's, it's the exposure. It ain't the yes. Real yes. Tech. Exactly. So uh, Doug Brumfield. Uh, All right. By the way, great guy though. Great guy. Shout great out great to guy. Brumfield. We'll be pulling for you. Definitely. Uh, so he's back at the quarterback spot. Uh, Vincent Davis, the pit transfer, which, you know, there was times 17 starts at pit. Mm-hmm. There was times where I really thought he was really good at pit. The pit just got so many guys. Narduzzi just keeps a stable of running yeah. backs back there. Um, a lot of guys. Yeah. And, and it's interesting because after that, it, it is a little thin. It goes Courtney Reese, maybe uh, Lester, uh, Donovan Lester. Running back situation seems a little interesting, but the wideouts. Yes, they lost Williams to Washington State, but Ricky White, the former Michigan State Spartan, who was second team all Mountain West, is back. They are counting on Jeff Weimer, the transfer, one of the one of the transfers to be a, a starter here. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, Jacob uh, De Jesus, huh? De Jesus? I don't know. De Jesus, I think it is. Um, uh, anyway, Mark uh, Malik Bradford also in that receiving core. I'm intrigued to see how the 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 passing offense will work here. Um, the tight end Shelton Zeon is back as well. This is a guy who Shelton Zeon the third. Twelve starts a season ago. Mm-hmm. Um, offensive line. You look. I know they lost a couple key guys uh, to, to the portal to go into Oklahoma right. State and Arizona State, but they uh, they bring in Jack Has from Buffalo to start at center. They got uh, Jalen St. John at left guard f- from Arkansas. Yes. And then it's kind of a, they, they bring back Tiger Shanks. Great name. Tiger Shanks off the T. Yes. <laughs> yes. And then, uh, Amani Trigg right at the right guard. And then they're breaking in a left tackle, brand new left tackle and Marcus Miller. I kind of think the offensive line will be yeah. similar. Not too bad with the offensive Maybe. line. Similar. Some, some new guys, some returning guys. Uh, yeah, they'll be fine. Um, but you know, it's going to be a different kind of conditioning and kind of, that's the thing. It's going to be a completely different kind of conditioned offense and it's a different system. So, uh, you know, it's going to be weird. It's a, tra- it's, it's a transition phase of the holdovers who are not part of that offense to the new guys are bringing in who maybe aren't ready or just plugging in. That is part of that offense. So it's going to be a hodgepodge. Yeah. Uh, and then the defensive side of the ball. Uh, that's Barry Odom's specialty. He brings yes. his coordinator, Mike Shearer. Um, the defense side of the ball, you know, this team had their moments of being solid a season ago. They returned seven. Only one starter on the defensive line in Darius Johnson uh, from a season ago. So breaking in three new starters on the D line, that's going to be interesting. They're counting on Jalen Dixon, Ben Key, and uh, Javier Carter, the LSU transfer, to really get in there and make a difference. The linebacking core, they return everybody, right? Yes. Fred Tompkins, Jackson. Well, well, actually they return everyone that they return three starters that started college football games last year. Jackson Woodard was at Arkansas, right? So, He's there, no. but Fred Tompkins, Kyle Beardry. I mean, linebackers were to have their talent. Sure. Yeah. And I, I even think the secondary has got something too with Jerry Williams back. Uh, Cameron Oliver, Jonathan Baldwin, and Jackson Turner, who comes in from Arizona, who's penciled in the start, and they're counting on Ricky Johnson mm. uh, to to emerge at corner. He's just a sophomore, but I kind of like the defensive side of the ball. If the D line can be all right, how about you? 
Yeah, I don't mind them. I don't mind them at all. But like I said, the linebackers where it's at, the D, D line is going to need to be replenished. Um, secondary's got some stuff. I don't know. You know, it's uh, it's. I think they had the talent there. They got obviously this, this is Odom's bread and butter, being the defense. As long as it, you know, it's going to take, a, but it's also going to take a little time just to learn his style of uh, defense because it's yeah. also completely different. You know, very true. They bring in uh, Jose Paisano from uh, Hey Paisano. From Missouri State, Bobby Petrino, a.k.a. Road Rash Face, brought him in. And then uh, punter <laughs> um, Marshall Nichols from Mississippi State. That's yeah, that's it. That's, I know you were big in the kicking game in special teams. They lost a good one in that Daniel Gutierrez, who was yeah. uh, 18 of 19 last year. <laughs> he was just, I mean, come on now, you know? That's, okay. that, that guy's a legend. Um, but Legendary uh, kicker, yes. But, yeah, so, I mean, I, I don't know if the offense will be better. The defense, I think. Will I'm going to say the defense will be slightly better. Defense slightly better. Offense, it's going to take a year before they can change this. This go, this go go is going to be slow, slow to get to get to get their mojo, if you will. And um, I mean, they, you know, uh, this is the whole thing. They they refuse to say rebuild, obviously, because it's a transition. Matter of fact, Barry Odom said his goal is to take this team and to go and win immediately. So when you say statements like that, that means to think that makes me think that they are not going to go and win immediately. <laughs> <laughs> Look, we're going to go. Well, we're going to go immediately and try to forecast the UNLV yes. 2023 schedule. Uh, hopefully you're watching on YouTube, youtube.com slash the college experience. You'll see the graphic right now. But first, I want to tell us. I want to tell the people and tell us. <laughs> tell us, <laughs> too. We need to hear this. All we right. need to hear this right from your mouth. <laughs> That the college football experience, UNLV running Rebels 2023 season preview episode is brought to you by Scott Bowser. No, I'm joking. Uh, shout out to Scott <laughs> Bowser. Yes. It's brought to you by uh, DraftKings. Look, you've waited all year long, and the time has finally arrived. College football is back, and so are the traditions. So are the tailgates, and so are the great offers from DraftKings Sportsbook. Right now, new customers can score $200 in bonus bets instantly when they bet just $5 on any college football bet. I told you, I like Jacksonville State getting a point in uh, week zero to take down the UTEP Miners. Uh, kick off the season with DraftKings Sportsbook. Download the app now. Use the promo code DGEN. That's D-E-G-E-N. New customers can score $200 in bonus bets instantly when they bet just $5 on any college football bet. Only at DraftKings Sportsbook with the promo code DGEN. Gambling problem call 1-800-GAMBLER. In New York, call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY. Uh, in West Virginia, visit www.1800gambler.net in partnership with Hollywood Casino at Charlestown Racetrack. All games regulated by West Virginia Lottery. Please play responsibly. In Connecticut, help is available. Gambling problem, call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. On behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort in Kansas, 21 or older in most eligible mm. states, but age varies by jurisdiction. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details and state-specific responsible gambling resources. Bonus bets expire seven days after issuance. Eligibility and deposit restrictions apply. Terms at sportsbook.draftkings.com slash football terms. Whew. We're also brought to you, we're also brought to you by Sports Gambling Podcast Patreon. Make sure you check out our Patreon. Sign up for the Patreon to get access to exclusive mm. content, including the NFL Win Totals Contest with a $1,000 first place prize. And like the guys just recorded their first uh, Sports Gambling Podcast Stories podcast just for the patrons. And it chronicle it was chronicling the, uh, the birth of the Sports Gambling Podcast Network. So go check it out. All right. There's even a Discord channel just for the patrons. And don't get this twisted. The Sports Gambling Podcast and SGPN has and always will give out their picks for free. The Patreon just a, a great way to support support the network and fight back against those scumbags, those corporate gamblers. You know, let's go. Uh, SportsGamblingPodcast.com slash Patreon. That's SportsGamblingPodcast.com slash Patreon. All right, we are back on the college football experience. UNLV running Rebels. Buster Screen. Remember old Buster Screen used to be Buster used to be Screen. Uh, the win total sitting at f what? Six? If you're watching YouTube.com slash the cause six? Let me get this. Wow. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Fly flag on the play. Look, I understand you went and hired an SEC head coach. 
right? But yeah, I th- I mean, well, I you know what I think this is. I think uh, it's obviously we're saying six. We're flabbergasted that it's this high. They don't do that. This is not what UNLV does. But it's UNLV. It's the home team for the book. You know, they've got the Vegas fans that are putting out the line. It's why Raiders have their special lines out there. You can buy exact, play exact wins just for Raiders games. UNLV is the hometown team, so you're gonna you're gonna get a juiced up number a little bit. So right well, away, six is way too high because of uh, again some hometown flavor. Let's get in there. Yeah, hometown flavor, but they also don't have a home crowd because they right. play at that filthy allegiance. But State. that doesn't mean they don't come and bet for them. Bet on them. You know? True. True. But check this out. Randall Cunningham graduated in 1984. Mm-hmm. Since then, 39 years of football, they have only had. So to hit the over on this, you would have to go seven and five. They have only had, by my count, three, three seasons with more than six wins. And. Some of those might have been bowl wins, which would not be eligible on your win total over. <laughs> wow. So three three times. Yes. Three since Randall. Times. Since Rocket, since the ultimate weapon, Rocket Randall, who makes the best marble in the city in Las Vegas. Now, if you need it for all of your marble needs, <laughs> call up Rocket Randall Cunningham. He'll but, be back scrambling and making marble for you. What what am I missing here? What like I, I like I said? I mean, it's you know, new coach SEC. You're right, bringing it out. At the same time, they had five wins last year. They put it. They gave him an extra win for six. Uh, it's just what it's. Wait I think second. it's just a caked up number because it's Vegas. Last year they had five wins, but let's not forget that uh, those wins were against Idaho State, who's one of the worst FCSs. Mm-hmm. North Texas, surprisingly not a bad team, but the other ones, Utah State, uh, right. they they had they were not the normal Utah State. Then New Mexico, and then Nevada. New I Mexico and Nevada don't. were terrible last year. You don't have to convince me. I'm saying uh, what they're thinking is you get, you got a lot of Vegas money coming in just from you know local support. Um, yeah, the quarterback, you know, the quarterback went down. Brumfield went down after they were they went four and one, and then they lost what, like seven in a row or something, to end the season, six in a row, yeah. something like that. Yeah. So maybe that went into their thinking, something like that. But I don't know. Either way, I'm with you. I'm leaning under. I don't see. I don't see how they're getting to seven. I'm not I, only I, leaning. I, under. I haven't even seen the schedule yet. I'm not only leaning under. I think I'm gonna. I'm ready to to, to throw down my. Uh, I know. I don't even need to see it. K, which is. I don't even need to see the schedule yeah. because. Even yeah, even if like whatever, even if a five and a half, I'm going under because like this is this is a rebuilding year period for a team that's bad anyway, you know. And this isn't a this isn't a, a a perennial champion that they're stripping and rebuilding. This is a bad team that's rebuilding. Yeah, and and <laughs> all right, let's jump into the schedule. I'm I'm a bit dumbfounded on this week one. I know Rhode Island to Vegas is a fucking trip. Hmm. But I can tell you this, the Bryant Bulldogs are better than Idaho State was last year. Bryant should have beaten Florida International right. week one last year. Terrible. They had essentially won the game. It was fourth and, and, and 20 in overtime. F- or no, before it even got to overtime. FIU throws a slant, and the safety makes a great hit to make sure that he doesn't catch the ball. It wasn't even helmet to helmet. It was shoulder. It was perfect. And Bryant should have won the game there, but they called it a ridiculous penalty, and the game got to overtime because of that. Watch out. Watch out. Watch Bryant out for these out. Bryant balls. <laughs> uh, they I'll should- watch out, but I want to give you an OV a home opener win. How many people will be at this game? <laughs> now, they play They play what? They play at Allegiant? It's terrible. They had one of the coolest stadiums ever. And why they, do they play all their games there at the hockey puck? Why do why do I mean, who the hell who's going to that game besides yeah. Wales coming in out of town? Rhode Island, you know. Yeah, the, uh, I mean, telling you, look, we're, well, Michael Barker will be on in a minute to talk about uh, that. But uh, week two, they head to Michigan. Jim Harbaugh's not coaching though. Hey, self-impo- self-imposed. Self-imposed. <laughs> uh, they're gonna lose by. Th- by at least what was 42 in, in, in Ann Arbor. They'll get crushed by Michigan. Um, i tell you what, and Michigan's going to be coming off that loss to East Carolina, too, so they're going to be upset. Amen. Amen, buddy. 
So then after that, they're hosting Vanderbilt, which is a strange game because UNLV actually did go to Vanderbilt a couple years ago and win in Nashville. Right. Take that, SEC. But no, I actually think Vanderbilt is actually trending in the right direction. Yeah, Vanderbilt. Oh, everyone's a lot, People are high on Vanderbilt this year. Yeah, I think Vandy's going to beat UNLV in the Death Star, whatever the fuck they call that thing. Yeah. Uh, like so you said, there is no, no home field advantage whatsoever. Zero. It's one of the worst. That is one of the worst places to watch a college football game. I'm saying mm-hmm. it right there. Fuck that stadium. It is terrible. Um, the very <laughs> the very next week at UTEP in the yeah. Sun Bowl, buddy. I mean, this is kind of a 50 50 game, but it's at UTEP. I would favor UTEP by like a field goal. Yeah, no, I'm I'm even more. I'm like I'm like, I'll lay I'll, I'll lay four and a half, six. I think El Paso wins this by a touchdown, but no problem. Yeah, so I got them one and three out the gate, and now here's mm-hmm. the tricky thing: the Hawaii Rainbow Warriors beat them last year in Timmy Chang's first year. Yeah. Well, now it's the second year, and another yeah. thing is, what do they call? How many islands are in Hawaii right now? I don't know, but they're all. But after the fires, they're all going to be in Vegas. I tell you that much. <laughs> Fair, um. very vague, exactly. <laughs> but dude, this is going to be a home game for Hawaii. I guarantee yeah. you, there's more Hawaii fans, there and they're going to be improved too. This isn't going to be the same Hawaii team either. I mean, I just want to play devil's advocate and say they beat Hawaii, but I let's let's just say they get that one. Let's just say, even though okay, I, I'll give you an LV this one, a revenge game because they lost last year too at Hawaii. But I was impressed. It's like, gonna be. It's, it's gonna. Yeah. Not, not, I mean, not to make a joke about the fires, but it's also gonna uh, add some wrinkles to their Hawaii season as well too, as far as uh, yeah, that's you know, fair. That's fair. Practicing, it's gonna be a lot of a lot of instability over out there. It's, I mean, that's. It's going to take a while for a recovery even to know things. So, so oh, let's, say, let, yeah. let's say two and three in two September, and three, even though I think Hawaii could win that game. Uh, mm-hmm. They get a bye week, and now you got what? Hey, flag. I need a flag. I need to buy a flag in here. Flag on the play here. Hey, uh, Mountain West Commissioner and, and people in charge of scheduling these games. What the fuck is the, the battle of the Fremont can't this? this 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 rivalry is fantastic, by the way. There's true animosity. Yes, for Nevada and UNLV, the people in Reno, and they play for that gigantic fucking cannon. That's awesome. Best trophy in sports, if you ask me. Mm-hmm. This is supposed to be the final week of the season. What the hell is this thrown on yeah, August? Why the fourteenth? Uh, What's happening here, folks? What are we doing? What is this, what is this game called again? Fremont, the Fremont rivalry for the Fremont Cannon. Oh, I love it. I yeah. love it. It's a gigantic rivalry. fucking cannon on wheels. Um, look, they won last year by five, but that was in Vegas. They mm-hmm. got to go to Reno, McKay Stadium. Look, if I'm giving them Hawaii, I'm taking Nevada here. Taking Nevada. I will say, I bet there will be more UNLV fans at Nevada than there will be a UNLV fans at any other UNLV home game. <laughs> <laughs> true, true. They won't have more Nevada fans in Nevada, but they'll have more UNLV fans there. They'll have a little more support there than they will at any other home game. Who you take? That said, I'm taking Nevada. So that puts us at uh, two and four. Two now and they're, four. Home, they're home to Colorado State. I think Colorado State's a flat out better team. Mm-hmm. I got them going to two and five. Okay, I have no problem you? with that. Yeah, yeah. I have no problem with that. Colorado State's better. Now they head to Fresno. They're gonna get killed. At, at Fresno. <laughs> two and six. <laughs> two and six. Light it up. All right. Now you circle this one because this is winnable. But it is to Albuquerque. You're a little dome team. You're going to go out there in November 4th to Albuquerque, the elevation. I mean, I don't have confidence in them going anywhere. Come yeah, I don't either. Here. This I mean, is, they beat them a- last year 31 20. But like I said, this is going to be, this is a completely different team, too. I mean, dude, I. <sighs> Call, call me crazy. I actually like think this is like a fit. I, I kind of favored New Mexico. Mm. I think it's a 50 50 game. I will not call you crazy, sir. I think it's 50 50, right? And uh, I'm taking New Mexico. Yeah, me too. Then they're home to Wyoming. Now, Wyoming, I was surprised. You know, that Craig Bowl thinks it's his best team he's ever had at Wyoming. He thinks they can compete for a championship. However, mm-hmm. though, right. I will say, Wyoming. They make you play their style of ball, which always lends to close games. So, mm-hmm. is it possible for an upset? Maybe. Yeah, but not, I, yeah. I still favor Wyoming. You favor Wyoming? Yeah, I think Wyoming's a better football team, but they play a style of ball. Right. Every team, it's almost like Iowa. It's like Iowa will get bit by like Northwestern because every game seventeen to fourteen because they're asking for it. Yeah, 
Uh, so it's a sneaky game. I wouldn't Both be surprised teams hang around, if UNLV yeah. run it. Yeah, you know what? Looking at the schedule, the way it's playing out, I'm going to give UNLV this one. I like the I like the UNLV upset here. Okay. And then that would put us at three wins. So still yeah, feel so, yeah, that's only three. Yeah. I have plenty of plenty of plenty of back, plenty of room in the, in the bank to give them uh, an upset and still go under. Well, then they head to Colorado Springs. You see what Air Force did to UNLV last year in the Ooh, desert? It was football one hundred and one, baby. About forty-two to seven. <laughs> I believe it was forty-two nothing too at one point. <laughs> um, that's called an asshole. Now the NCAA rule changes, obviously ridiculous, yeah. and maybe that maybe that hurts. The Falcons a little bit, but I'm still taking Air Force to win this thing. Yeah, I can't. You, they're not going to Air Force and winning that game. No way. Absolutely not. And then you get San Jose State the final week of the season. I'm kind of bullish on San Jose State. So I. <laughs> they only lost 40 to 7 of them last year. <laughs> I think this is a 3 and 9 team. And even with that, I'm giving them Hawaii and Wyoming. Right. Honestly. I have, yeah, I think I have my four wins and that's stretching it, you know? Six that's is pushing the total. It. Who the fuck Cameron. made this? The uh, Tarkanian making the Jerry Tarkanian? <laughs> or no, Danny Tarkanian. That is true. You never know who's on the fix, who's on the yep, what's going on, what, who, who they, who they, maybe they have these wins already bought off. You know, maybe they got a San Jose State bought. You know, they could have some coaches already in their pocket. Who knows who you're dealing with in Vegas? I but, mean, uh, but I, I like was, the, I like the under a lot. Dude, lock this up. Mm-hmm. Lock, I, lock it up. I don't need, I can't see a scenario where they win seven games. I can't right. build you a scenario where they win seven games without, like, realistically looking at this. So get on over there. Bet the hell out of this. Uh, folks, CJ's on the under. I'm on the under. But before we get out of here, I had a chance to sit down with Michael Barker, and I, he's got some great nuggets here about how ridiculous UNLV is to play these games at this stadium uh, and ruin their home crowd. I think you might dig it. Uh, so with no further ado, here's my sit down with College Football Campus Tour, a.k.a. Michael Parker. Joining me on the College Football Experience, UNLV, Red and Rebels 2023 season preview episode is none other than Michael Barker, a.k.a. College Football Campus Tour. Yes, on Twitter, X, whatever you want to call it, at CFB Campus Tour. Follow that page because you will not regret it. Michael has been to every single college football stadium in the FBS. Yes, all 133 of them. He's also been to a lot of the FCS, D2, and D3. And he documents all of it via his Twitter account. Uh, going to five, six, seven games every single week of the season. Unbelievable stuff that Michael does. And, uh, Michael, I appreciate you hopping on the show uh, to talk a little UNLV football. Unfortunately, they did something terrible for me. Because I love Sam Boyd Stadium, and I think Sam Boyd Stadium looks fantastic, right? It looks absolutely fantastic. But for some reason that I don't understand, the UNLV Running Rebels are now playing at, uh, in my opinion, one of the worst stadiums in America, uh, Allegiant, the Raiders Stadium, which is a just a dome that's just blah and bland. It reminds me of just like California Pizza Kitchen. That's what I would say. That is, they're, they're play, they play at the California Pizza Kitchen uh, or TGI Fridays or something. But, Michael, how you doing, man? Appreciate you hopping on the show. I'm doing great. You know, we, we're doing a lot of these episodes. Unfortunately, they all can't be classic stadiums. Um, so uh, let's get through this one. There's a lot of facts that people should know about Allegiant and its relationship with UNLV. You say, unfortunately, they can't all be classics. I would argue back, and I appreciate you coming on the show, man, but I would argue back, it could be because Sam Boyd's right there. It's very true. So uh, they have made the decision to not play in a classic stadium, which is unfortunate because, as you said, they have one in Summerlin, Las Vegas. It's about 10 miles off the strip. It's not that far. but uh, So they played in the Legion and opened in 2020, uh, 65,000 seat capacity, home of the Raiders. And so part of their rental agreement with the Raiders is a couple things. Number one is they get paid $3 million per year until 2030 to not hold events at Sam Boyd Stadium due to a non-competition agreement. So uh, there's been teams in the uh, USFL, concerts, motocross, they've wanted to use Sam Boyd. But uh, UNLV, which owns Sam Boyd, is contractually obligated to not allow events there for $3 million. On the other side of that, last year, UNLV paid $2.2 million in rent to play games, six home games, in Allegiant Stadium. So that clears $800,000 profit for an entire year, which doesn't sound like very much money. 
and the operating costs at Sam Boyd, where they didn't have to pay any rent, were between seventy-five thousand and one hundred fifty thousand per game. So uh, they have made the decision to uh, make Sam Boyd inoperable, unusable for eight hundred thousand dollars annually, and instead they made the conscious decision to play in a stadium where you call it one name. Some people will call it the Roomba. They'll call it the hockey puck. They'll call it the helipad. It has nothing to do with college football. This also has nothing to do with UNL foot, UNLV football, which we love and we're excited about the new coaching staff and the direction of the program. However, they should be playing in San Boy Stadium. 100%. 100%. And I've talked to UNLV students that don't like it. They're like, why would I go to the game all the way across town? And it's like, and they're never going to pack that thing. It's way too big. It makes no sense. They are handicapping themselves. A, financially, which you pointed out, but also B, from a fan perspective, to create buzz around the town. It's one of these, it's 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 honestly like mind-numbing thinking about this because you look at Sam Boyd, it is a classic stadium. I think it's one of the better stadiums out there in college football. And to have that right there and to not play on it, unbelievably ridiculous. I hope they change their ways about this, man. But uh, so uh, have you been, well, have you been to Boyd and have you been to Allegiant? Yeah, so I went to two games at Sam Boyd. I went there in 2017, and it was a game against Utah State, and it was amazing because uh, the sun was going down. You got the desert hills in the background. I love the end zone where it was, you know, they had the the, uh, stratosphere there. They got little hearts and clubs all over the field. It's custom for UNLV, and when they play at Allegiant, they got to swap back and forth. I also went to the uh, 2019 uh, Las Vegas Bowl, and it was Arizona State playing Fresno State. Ronnie Rivers went wild in that, and that was another great game. And you know, there's a huge parking lot there. The tailgating scene at Sam Boyd was amazing. Uh, you know, I call the, the tailgating parking lot at Allegiant. I call it poach, postage stamp. It's very small for Raiders games. It's extremely expensive. But uh, you know, Hawaii fans they call Las Vegas the Ninth Island when they come. They tailgate. The home fans do so. There's tons of reasons, uh, not just atmosphere, not just history, but the game day experience, all that playing at Sam Boyd. I did go to one game. It was in 2021 because when a school replaces the stadium, I want to go back. During 2020, I have a policy to go to the game op- or the grand opening, but they weren't allowing fans in 2020, so we couldn't go there. It was a weeknight game against San Jose State. First of all, they didn't open up the upper deck, so you can only go on the lower deck. And then one thing that particularly bothered me was before the game, I was there an hour and I like to go to the 50 yard line, shoot a little panoramic video from one end zone to end zone to show it off on Twitter to try to showcase the stadium. But because I didn't have a ticket between the thirties, they wouldn't allow me to go and take that video, even though it was an hour before the game. And even though there weren't that many people there. So I am going back November 10th. They have a Friday night game against Wyoming. I'm hoping that, you know, we're past COVID we, you know, have excitement with the program. Hopefully we can get a better crowd there. But, you know, again, it's disappointing that you have a great stadium there that we're not just talking about theoretically. You know, we're not talking about we wish we went to the Orange Bowl. We wish we went to Pitt Stadium. Like a lot of us have experienced Sam Boyd and we yearn for it. Yeah. Yeah. Which is so just disgusting to me. Like uh, I can't. I'm sorry. Uh, you could offer me free tickets. And, and look, I appreciate the fact you're going to go and support UNLV. We want UNLV to be good football, basketball, whatever. We like UNLV. I, I can't support them there. I can't support them there, man. It is like it's it's a rule, but hey, you're a better man than I. And that's why your college football campus tour, folks, give him a follow on Twitter at CFP Campus Tour because Michael does incredible work. Uh, appreciate you hopping on the show. And look, maybe one day I can catch you at Sam Boyd. Maybe after 2030, unless we get some financials changed. But hopefully they do, because it's a wonderful place to watch a game. Hell yeah, brother. Appreciate you hopping on the show. I'm excited to see your travels this year, man. Take care. Thank you. We'll see you next time. Thank you. Anytime, man. CJ Sullivan. Yes. Did you hear that? They're basically going in debt by playing there, and then they can't even have Evil Knievel or whoever or Monster Truck Madness at Sam Boyd. This is ridiculous, man. This is this like is one, of the most, one of the most ridiculous things I've ever heard. You And, and dude, go look at Sam Boyd. Sam Boyd is awesome. Like, this right. one drives me crazy. This is like, to me, like a top 25 college football venue, and you're just going to fucking just destroy that and go in debt 
and and have no one support your your teams. I I don't understand the logic here. Just because on a on a recruiting visit you can say, look, it's an NFL stadium. Is that I what? know? I don't What's understand. Well, no, it's it's to cater. Like they said, it's to cater to road crowds to come in there and they, and they comp it. It's all it's a it's one big Vegas show comp. It's all they care about. That's what they're doing. That's what. And then they throw the XFL team in a minor league baseball stadium. <laughs> fucking scissor lifts. <laughs> And and just to not play at Sam Boyd, what I it's know. sitting there, it's just it's sitting awful. There. It's, awful. It, it's unbelievable to me. It's like, I, I, it's like you know you have like Lambo. I feel like I feel like it's on. You know, it's like a great college football venue. Sam Boyd is, and you're just gonna mm-hmm. piss it away. Fuck is going on, people? I I hope this under destroys it because I know it is. All right, uh, I, I I want you and everybody to be good, man. I grew up like in the. The football. The yeah, basketball. they deserve it. It's a good city, good people out there, and they said it's a good program. They, you know, who's calling the shots? Who's calling the shots? The mayor? <laughs> Let's get the mayor on the show. All right, oh, folks, we're both on the under, and we're both locking it up. So, got to do what you got to do. It's called karma after this stinking stadium deal. Uh, folks, that's our show. Make sure you give CJ Sullivan a follow on Twitter at. CJ Sullivan underscore. Uh, but also make sure you subscribe to the bottom line bombs. Podcast. Bottom line bombs, man in a box. Subscribe to that yeah. five star review. Tell 50,000 of your friends. Get in there. Bottom line bombs. And you were just you were just in Vegas on VEASAN, right? You did a little I VEASAN. I was spot. just on Vegas and VEASAN with Jeff Pawson. Did a three segment show. I gave out a few of our college totals that we've gone through in, in the box. And uh, yeah, we're in and. The, uh, we've got a contract with them. Friday shows. The boys will be out there every Friday. So Circus let's go, Sports UNLV. Sports. Give us a show. Yeah, exactly. All right. What are you doing, folks? All right. You can pay us $800,000 to talk about your, uh, your game. <laughs> too, all right? Right. Uh, folks, uh, look, subscribe to the College Football Experience on Twitter or follow it on Twitter at TCE on SGPN. I'm on Twitter at the Colby D and yeah, subscribe to the college football experience. Subscribe to the bottom line, Bob's uh, subscribe to the college basketball experience. I'm excited about Vegas basketball. Can we get the run of rebels? Darkadian was going to so many different final fours with the hammer. Remember the hammer arm on Gilliam. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, Gumby. Yes. yes. Folks, yeah. we got to get back to those days. All right. And it starts, it starts with you and not playing those stinking games at the stinking Stinking Raider Stadium. All right, all right, let's get past the dough. Let's get yeah. past the dough. All, right. all right, I could do an hour. I could do an hour. I know, I know. We got to uh, keep safe for it. Folks, uh, all, all those podcasts come together on YouTube, youtube.com slash the college experience. We also have the Big 12 uh, experience. Check that out as well. Uh, and the Sports Gambling Podcast. Yes, they're already previewed all 32 NFL teams. Go check out all those episodes. They're out every Friday. They'll be at VEASAN or on VEASAN at, uh, at Circa. So check us out. Uh, until next time, folks, this is the college football experience. You and LV running rebel style. You better start thinking about yours and we out of here.